Ladies and gentlemen, Kenyans are asking, where is Susan Kihika? <laughs> where is Susan Kihika? The Nakuru governor has kept a low profile. And uh, today, I think Nation wrote that article asking, where is, he, where is she? It has been trending in Twitter. Kenyans asking why there is a simmering fallout between Kihika and President Ruto. She was a very strong supporter of President during campaigns. And at one point, if the position of running mate was to go to a lady or rather a woman, then that would be Susan Kihika. Then she won against um, the Ubuntu uh, party leader, that is Leki Nyanjui, whom I have seen, I think, in the recent past in some few state functions. He's been attending, maybe to seek audience with the president. When Susan Kihika uh, got that seat, she really fought some battles at the campaign trail, and those battles were, battles were including that with um, Ngunjiri Wambugu. Not Ngunjiri Wambugu, I think it's Ngunjiri, I don't know what's the other name. The, Bahati, the former Bahati member of parliament, and they were not seeing eye to eye. But I understand that governors work within a context, and uh, governors cannot be all through everywhere. But we've seen different functions why, where the national government are coming together and some governors have been trying to seek audience with the president. One thing I realize is that um, when the counties started struggling with the finances, there was some team, some allied, some sky team who actually deemed as President William Ruto's confidence that were dispatched to seek audience and sit down with the president William Ruto so that they can address the question of the funds. And that happened, but probably it did not yield fruit. The person, one of the lady, one of the governors that was, that was picked for that meeting was actually Susan Kihika. But remember the devolution falls under office of Rigadi Geshagwa. So at one point, there was also another meeting at the office of Rigadi Geshagwa. And people walked out. The governors walked out after, after failing to agree on the way forward on this matter. So that's bit what was going on. The other, other factor that also played, that was also in context of Nakuru, is uh, the contentious, um, the contentious moving, moving of the port from Naivasha to Mombasa. And Naivasha, which was supposed to be breathe life and of course give jobs to residents of that place, is now a deserted place. And um, Susan Kehika was really coming under a lot of pressure from the locals who are actually blaming her that she failed to fight for them even though the port was being taken away from Naivasha. So this discussion was here about Susan Kehika on whether she really supported what the national government was doing. But in my understanding, I think the fallout could come out because of some of these, some, um, these issues that are coming up. Clearly, William Ruto is crippling devolution. It cannot be normalized. And in fact, for the last three months, the counties have, are yet to receive the allocation. I saw uh, Fernandez Baraza, who is now saying that they are going to shut down the counties and send the governors, the, the county staff back home, send the county staff back home since they can no longer pay. Uh, they can no longer pay salaries. And I don't know, um, I'm just trying to, you know, Kenya is very different. I once said that um, it was wrong for governors to pick the chairperson of Council of Governors to come from the government side. 
you should not pick a leaning chairperson of Council of Governors because the Council of Governors is Anway Guru. They've been crying, asking for this money, and this money is not coming. Now, I want you to imagine Nakuru. I want you to imagine Nakuru. You know, let's be very sensitive. Those county workers in Nakuru pay rent. Nakuru is a city. So most of those who stay in Nakuru are people who pay rent. You know, you know those in the other counties, rural counties, maybe are staying at home. And Nakuru is a city with a plan. And Susan Kehika could be feeling that with the crippling funding, she may not do much as a governor in Nakuru, and that will put her re-election in jeopardy. Uh, Nakuru is one county that has not had a governor go more than two terms. <laughs> Can you challenge beyond that? Find out. You will realize that Nakuru governor yandanga moja. So the challenge why Susan Kehika could also be having a ghost law against William Ruta is because when the devolution is killed there through uh, this uh, shrink funding or other zero funding, then the governor is lacking something to show the people. Even what she's supposed to do, because in re-election you need to show what the people ought to have done. She runs the risk of losing that seat even in future. Secondly, the contentious appointment of county executive secretaries has been hampered by tribal uh, witch hunt. She picked her sec, the team, county executive members, and I remember by that weekend I was in Nakuru, and someone challenged it in court. It was challenged on some regional balance, you know, tribal balance if I'm not wrong, that, you know, he picked from, I don't know, two tribes or something. So that has been a challenge, and what actually came out here is the UDA leadership, the executive team here have, were trying to infiltrate the counties so that they can use the counties to absorb their political operatives who may not get a chance in the national government. That is, that is also one thing that is in it. That they may not really get a chance in it. And that will affect it. So Susan Kehika is facing some battles. And some of those battles are battles that are meant to make her leave that seat in 2027. The tribal witch hunt on the appointment of sex. Um, look at, I think Kehika is also unhappy by the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, Nakuru is left out. If you look at William Ruto's plan for the rift, he mentioned about building um, construction of a hospital, of a referral hospital, that is going to touch, help three counties, the counties of Narok, Bomet, and I think Kericho. I fully supported that because I studied in Narok, and I can tell you that I used, for, for serious medical services, you had to go to Nakuru. Hapo Katikati, there is only one hospital called Tenwek. I think that's in Bomet. It's one of the best. It's private, but it's one of the best. But there, there is a problem. And so, Kehika could be feeling that Nakuru is left out. What so far has been done in terms of Nakuru? Or maybe he's been trying to push for development from that, and it has not yet been successful. Because what has, what has been happening is that people take the small excitements, you know, the fact that a PS was picked or other a cabinet secretary was picked from the county, something that just benefits the individual. And Kehika needs to be very careful because even the Ngunjiri, uh, the Ngunjiri, Kimani Ngunjiri, yes, I think I've gotten the name. Kimani Ngunjiri Wambogo is from Nyeri. Then Kimani Ngunjiri, yes, the Bahati MP is Kimani Ngunjiri. Could actually be a force, now is the land CS, huh? could be a force that can be used to forestall her success in Akuru. 
and something is not simply adding up there. Lastly, I got this from somewhere that during the discussion about the land rates, Nakuru's county government was being pushed to go after Uhuru Kenyatta land in Naivasha, asking for the land rates. Huh. And you know, Kehika is a dynasty. You also have to agree, Kehika is a dynasty. Recently, Musalem Davadi was in Nakuru, and to be specific, in Egerton University, an event that being a prime cabinet secretary, he was supposed to be uh, accompanied by Susan Kehika because that was a state function. And that is within her county, she never attended. That is also one thing that really raised eyebrows about her absence. So back to the Nevashan land rates. Uh, Kehika is a dynasty. And maybe will not heed to those calls. I don't know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, that is my sneak peek of why I think Kihika is taking a backseat from all that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for supporting me. We are traveling. I'm going to Kakamega today. At, uh, I'm going to Kakamega on Tuesday. I'll be in Kakamega in the morning so that we can do, we can meet Mze. I'm told uh, uh, the surgery was done. And we are going to meet Mze and do the last bit of it that is remaining so that we can hand over. And of course, I thank you very much for those who are supporting this podcast from every part of the country. But they all want to share Facebook, Twitter. I don't take it for granted. Asante Nisana.